Good morning friends, Jerry Rosa here again in my uh, workshop and uh, getting ready to rehair a bow. Uh, one of my least favorite jobs to do, but an important job nonetheless and one that has to be done. I probably have rehaired, oh I don't know, somewhere in a neighborhood of 50 to 100 bows I guess in my 30 years. So I'm not an expert. I uh, done it enough to know what I'm doing, but I don't consider this to be my my forte, I guess. Uh, I do the best I can, and I've learned over the years how to do it. So I'm going to give you my method. Now I'm going to show you all the tools that you need first, and I'll point the camera down here to my bench. There's a lot of stuff. First of all, of course, you're going to need some bow hair. This is Siberian white bow hair, uh, white horse hair, and uh, it's some of the best stuff. It's pure white, no, no uh, pepper in it, no dark colors in it or anything and it comes uh, with a metal clip on the end uh, it's just about the right amount to put on a bow the problem is that metal thing's too big and, and they put glue on the end of this so it's real stiff on the end and you can't put that in a bow so you have to retie this and we'll show you that that would be one of the very first steps you also need um, a lot of other tools uh, you're going to need a little tiny razor saw probably you don't absolutely have to have that but it's handy uh, you'll need some spruce, straight grain spruce wood. I just happen to have this left over from carving the top of an instrument. Uh, you'll need a little heat source. We'll show you why you need that later. This is probably the handiest one to use because you can just pull the trigger and get your instant flame. You may need a little oil. You don't always need that. You might need a little extra glue. Uh, you don't always need that either. You will need some white glue by my method, so Elmer's white glue is probably the best thing to use. It's good to have a handy little uh, Marksol marker, uh, something that's kind of waterproof because your hair is going to be wet at one point. You're going to need to mark it. Uh, you'll need a fine tooth comb, and I just use this, uh, I guess it's just a, a lady's comb. They use it, used to call it a rat tail comb or something but uh, it's got fine teeth on it and I use that. You'll need a very p sharp pair of scissors, the sharper the better, and these little, uh, I guess these would be like barber hair trim scissors, they're handy. Uh, you'll need a very sharp X-Acto knife, new blade was his preferred. The, uh, a little tool like this to help clean out some uh, cavities in the bow uh, itself, and I'll show you those later. I also have another one in case I need it. There's a, a sharp chisel will be handy. Some kind of a device that has a blunt round end that you can use to push down the hair down into these little crevices and things. Something that won't cut the hair smooth but round and, and something you can push with. And then maybe a rat tail file like that, a round file. And possibly a pair of pliers. Uh, and some thread of course and the heavier the thread the better but yet you don't want to go so heavy that it makes it bulky uh, this is just a good strong all-purpose thread and of course finally you're gonna need a bow to rehair and if you can look at this one you can see it definitely needs to be rehaired I, I don't know if I mentioned you're gonna need some water too by the way some warm water and you'll see why later first thing we're gonna do is take the old bow apart and uh, it's probably easiest to put it in a bow vise, which is one more thing you'll need. This end holds the tip of the bow, and it will uh, slide up and down this slot to work for different length bows. This end down here holds the frog end, and so we're going to put it in there first and uh, see what we can do about working on this. This has padded jaws so that when you tighten it down, it doesn't... Uh, do any damage to the bow. I'll slide this down a little bit and get the frog in here a little better. Okay, and then we'll tighten down the frog end. And again, they're padded jaws, so the jaws are like a foam rubber padding. And the first thing we're going to do is just get rid of this old hair. It's absolutely of no value. So I like to leave a little bit on both ends to hold on to and pull on, actually. Sometimes it's handy to have something to pull with. It's also handy to have a little trash can real close by because you got to throw a lot of stuff away. Okay, to take a frog apart, sometimes the one I just, I just did one before I did this video just so that I'd have good practice before I did this. I wished I had videoed that one because it went real easy. Some of these go real easy, some of these go really hard. So we'll see how this one goes. And this, this, uh, 
this little metal piece here, this ferrule, will slide off. And it came off fairly easy. And uh, that sometimes is the hardest thing to do. And if you look at that, you can tell which way it's been on there. The, the, the corners will almost always be slightly rounded. This corner is just slightly wore. And that goes towards the tip. So you got to kind of remember that when you put it back on later. And this is also the hardest thing to remember to put this on before you put the hair back in this frog. You have to slide this up on the hair, otherwise you'll end up doing this over. And I've done that many times and I hate myself for it. So anyway, that's a, a good reminder is this thing here is very important and you have to put it on as soon as you get your hair in this end and before you put it in this end. So we'll set that aside. And I'm very glad that came out easy. I can tell this one was done by somebody who's not a real good uh, bow rehairer, but I can tell they used a lot of glue on this. And normally you don't use too much glue on any of this because it's all held together by friction. And they use quite a bit of glue here, I can see. There's another little piece of wood in here. It's a spreader that spreads the hair out down here at the ferrule end, at the uh, frog end. And I'm trying to get that little piece of wood out of there. I'd like to save it where I don't have to make the new piece of wood, but it looks like I'm going to probably end up tearing this up and probably have to make a new piece. <laughs> it came out somewhat intact. It's just a very flat, thin piece of wood. I don't know how well it's going to show up, and it's very hard to hold because it's very small. But it's very flat, very thin. It's in a wedge shape. And it's basically you slide it between the ferrule and the hair and the frog, and it spreads the hair out makes the hair nice and flat. Okay, I'm pulling on this hair I left there to try to loosen things up and break some of that old crystallized glue. They used a horsehide glue on this, fortunately, so the glue's breaking out fairly easy. On most frogs, it's a, a mother of pearl. That will slide, There's it will slide out of, these are slots on both sides of this, and that's in the slots, and hopefully if it's not too glued in there, which I'm afraid it will be, and I'm cutting the glue up out of front of this, this one looks like it's going to be tough, I have a feeling, because <laughs> I can see the glue, a lot of glue. Anyway, I'm trying to cut all that glue loose here and get the slots opened up in front of it. This slide right here, this is what we're trying to slide it that way. It should, it's just in little grooves on both sides and it should just slide out. And it's usually not very hard. Usually if you can get something behind it, it just slides right out. So that's telling me that they've probably used a lot of glue on this whole thing. And I can see glue in here. There's just glue everywhere. So I have a feeling they, that I would say this was done by more of an amateur. Oh, there it moved. It just moved. Just finally. There it's going. Slightly. So you can see here back and behind it now, there's, it's opened up a little bit. There, it's moving a little bit more. Ooh, that hurt a little bit. Well, it came unglued from the wooden piece. I hate that when that happens too. The wood is the slide. That's what the slot is cut to. And then this piece is glued on top of it. So right now I'm going to re-glue that so that it has time to set up. I'm going to scrape off the old glue first. Move this back here where you can see a little bit of what I'm doing. I'm just going to take this chiseled blade, scrape the old glue off first. I'm going to put a drop on here, spread it around. Yeah, that's more to drop, actually. Spread it around real good. Wipe off the extra glue here on the edge of my table, which I've done many thousands of times. Put these two pieces together. Squeeze them together and get all the extra glue off of it. Center it in the center it on there as best I can. Put it back exactly where it was so it doesn't interfere, interfere with the sliding part of this. The hair's down in this frog still. And what we have to do is get that out of there. 
and there's a little block of wood and I don't know how well that's going to show up on camera but there's a little block of wood right there at the end of my exacto knife and that's pressed down on top of the hair to hold the hair in there hopefully they didn't glue that in there so if they did that'll be a little harder to get out but it's not usually terribly hard so and if, if worse comes to worse we just make a new little block and put it in there uh oh uh oh Houston we've got a problem this uh, silver part is spinning on the on the uh, shaft and that's not supposed to spin I've never had that happen before usually that's all one piece uh, so the black piece and the silver piece are disconnected and I'm not able to turn the black piece to get it to unscrew there's a long screw that goes through this whole thing here and it's not unscrewing at all again I didn't test this before I started filming so never run into this before I gotta be honest I've done a lot of these so I'm gonna try to loosen it up with pliers here there's another reason why you might need pliers seems to be coming I'm working it slowly so I don't just twist it in two or something seemed like it worked I think maybe I got lucky there hopefully it's got it's just so old and so rusted you can see the rust on this I mean it's just really rusted and it just hadn't been turned in a long long time okay and so the inside of the frog or the underside of the frog looks like that that's the little thing and we were screwed into that is what we were doing on the inside of the bow on the inside of the bow shaft so that's what we're unscrewing there so we got that unscrewed and this is why you need the oil and I'll put a little drop of oil on this to just let it be soaking on the threads there and I'll put a little uh, oil on the threads themselves actually before I put the oil on the threads here's another little thing you could use is a little wire brush see how many tools it takes a lot of tools to do a bow now I'm going to put a little oil right on the threads themselves okay work that in on that shaft and stuff and I'll just set that aside to wipe off the excess oil okay it wouldn't hurt to even wire brush this little slide there's a little brass slide well, it should be brass I don't know this one doesn't look like it's brass to be honest with you it looks like it's all rusted anyway there's there's a little slide here that slides on top of the because it's so corroded I'm gonna taking the wire brush and cleaning it up too just to that'll make it slide better when we put it back together later okay now back to what I was getting ready to do didn't expect to do all that I've got to pull this hair up and I have to work on getting this little piece of wood out of there again this little tiny chisel works good for getting in here and oh I think we're gonna be lucky this doesn't look like it's glued at all which is very good anyway I'm prying that out and I got it out in one piece and that's amazing that almost never happens and uh, you can see a little just a just a little tiny block of wood is all it is and that's wedged down in there to hold the hair down in there now I should be able to pull this hair right out and I did and you can see how there was how the hair has been knotted together and uh, I can tell they didn't put near as much hair on there as I'll be putting on this one and uh, maybe that's my maybe that's my problem maybe I always put too much hair on them and maybe that's why I have more trouble than I should have um, but at least that gives you a lot longer lasting bow when you put more hair in there of course now we've got the other end of the bow to work on the tip end and it's basically the very same technology there's another little wooden block right there that you can see holding the hair in and I'll see if I get lucky on this end okay I got it out it, it actually came out fairly good but it I still broke it into a lot of pieces and you can see that in there had a knot on it too 